Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing? I hope we're all well. I hope we are particularly enjoying this music. This one's for you, Bezhoth. <laughs> hello, hello, Flicky Dicky. Hello, hello, Bezhoth. Welcome to the stream, a reptile for Word Lizard Day. Fuck, that's so much better than my title. What? <laughs> Can I commission you to write my stream titles for me? That's so much better. That's... <laughs> Oh, fuck's sake. Uh, and here is the music for you. Best half. I hope you enjoyed it. It's bloody wonderful. I love it too. Uh, never seen or heard anything from this game. Well, then you're... Well, I would say in for a treat. We'll see how it goes. Um, the thing that's playing for, for the stream learning is delightful and quirky. That was the swamp music. It doesn't sound like a swamp, but I promise you it's a nice and pleasant swamp. Good stuffs. Uh, 2006. Blimey, is that when it came out? Goodness me, I was six years old then. Or it was October, I suppose. I was seven. Ah, good stuff. Commission me for anything you like. Hell yeah. Captions. Not captions. Uh, stream titles, that's it. <laughs> oh, wonderful stuff. Well then, how are we all doing? I hope we're all okay. Do let me know, as an, as, as always, if the uh, music is too loud, too quiet. But welcome, everyone, to what I'm calling my deep, deep, Pit of Nostalgia, also known as The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. As we've already found out, this game came out in late 2006, probably, roughly, sounds about right. Um, and it's bloody wonderful. It was basically the second half of my child childhood. Too quiet and could still feel my soul in my body. You want it a little bit louder? All right, hang on, let me just... How's that? It's not much louder, but if I go too much louder, you won't be able to hear me in the actual gameplay, I can promise you for a fact. Um, <laughs> there we go. Wonderful stuff. Now, quickly before we start, I've got three options, and I would like people to choose, because I couldn't make my mind up, although I'm leaning one way now that I think about it. We're going to play this game, we're going to have a wonderful time. Do we want to start from the very beginning? Do we want to skip the tutorial section, which is about 30-40 minutes of gameplay, 30-45 minutes maybe? and get straight into the first proper world? Or do we want to just pop into like the second world just, just to see what that's like? I'll let people decide what they want. I have an idea of where I'm leaning, uh, but I've got the three options set up so we can choose. The steam sends my soul to a new plane. It's bloody good, isn't it, from the beginning? I mean, it is called a new beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's in the title, exactly. Look, you're right, you're not wrong. I just thought I'd give us the option. We have, um, let's load some memory cards. We have Tall Plains, which is the second proper, proper world. Uh, Dante's Freezer, which is the first proper, proper world. Or we could just do a new game and just go from the very beginning. And that sounds like the option we're going to go for, I think. Just going to get a drink first. It just seemed like the option that jives. Want to see Ignitus? You want to see the big boy? Oh, go on then. <laughs> Alright, let's pop over to the screen here, and second question, do we want to watch the cutscenes? Actually, I don't think we have a choice, let's just start a new game, I don't think we have a choice for the first one. Uh, new game, down here. Alright, brace yourself everyone, I don't think we have a choice in this first cutscene. This will tell you all you need to know about in this game. The year of the dragon, in a world beyond the realms. Year of the Dragon, shout out to the last I good Spyro game before others. this. Awaited the birth of the dragon of whom the prophecies foretold. But the Dark Master heard the prophecies as we've well. We've got Dark Masters, we've got prophecies. It's going I well so far. I hidden the eggs long before, but I... I thought we were ready. I thought they were safe. Oh, it's oh, a pebble egg. Oh, I was wrong. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dark armies? How dramatic. Raw XD. Ancestors look after you. 
May they look after us all. Yeet. Yeah, but Spyro literally becomes Moses. It's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Shocked Pikachu face. Anyhow, behold, Moses. Now on a river of honey. Eventually, the egg came to rest in a distant swamp, where a family of dragonflies gathered round, wondering what magnificent creature could possibly live inside. They didn't have to wonder for long. You can tell that one's the mother dragonfly because she has Pixar mom hips. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, we've got exposition, we've got backstory, we've got dramatic Moses references, we've got dark armies, dark masters, temples, other dragons. <laughs> You're about to say that? I'm glad, I'm glad we're on the same way. But... Yeah, frightened them at first. Anyway, into gameplay. Amazed and astonished them. Eight, nine, ten. Here I come! It was a purple dragon, who they eventually adopted and raised as one of their own. They named him Spyro. And he grew up alongside Sparks, the young dragonfly who was born the same day. And is also a piece fact, of shit. The two were almost like brothers. The more oddly matched yet compatible pair of brothers the world has never seen. Never catch me this time, purple boy. As for Spyro, he, like all of us, accepted the world into which he was born, believing he was one of them. A big purple one of them, true. But one of them, nonetheless. So, this is Spyro. Isn't he beautiful? And yes, for the eagle-eared amongst you, we have Gary Oldman as the voice of Ignitus, and Elijah Wood as the voice of Spyro. Obviously. That seems like the logical conclusion to achieve. Anyhow, we've got a Sparks we need to look at for gameplay progression-based purposes. Bzzz. Where's he gone? I see you, my little glowing friend. Seeing and catching are two different things, a big boy. A big boy. What on earth is Sparks doing with his yeah, life? You better run. That's a question I'll be asking quite a few times. We've got Spyro. Very cute. Very lovely. We've got Sparks. A bit of a piece of shit. Quite frankly, bit of a piece of shit. I do not like Sparks. <laughs> and that's okay. Oh, look at him with his little voice show. You little forest in the swamp and your eyes so cute. <gasps> Let's jump, everyone. Oh, shit. I've got... Hang on. I've lost the camera. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> Whee. Nice, wonderful stuff. I'm chasing you, Sparks. Oh, it's so soft and light-hearted at the start. I love it. It's so gentle. What's the matter, little Spyro? You can't fly? Oh, that's right. You walk everywhere. Mm, that's too bad. Piece of shit, like I say. You're toast when I <laughs> catch you. Sparks talks, yeah, he doesn't just bzz, bzz this time around. He, they gave him a voice, and that was certainly a decision that they definitely made. Um. Ah, must be tough to lose all oh, the time. Oh, dear. <laughs> all right, let me out of here, you overgrown fungus. Spyro, seriously, let me a hand here, will you, brother? Jeez, Sparks, I don't know. Frogweed's gotta eat, too. Frogweed's gotta eat, too. I'm on Spyro's side here. Do something. I'm your buddy. My wings are getting moldy. I can't for the life of me remember who Sparks' voice actor is, but um, there are three games in this series, and the voice actor changes each in each of them. He has a different voice in each game. It's amazing. I love it. Ugh. Now I smell almost as bad as you do. <laughs> and that's pretty bad. 
See you later, sucker. And he just buggers so off. I agree, Elijah Wood and our Spyro. So much for bloody gratitude. David Spade, ah, oh, wonderful. <laughs> there we go. These are frogweeds. If you are asking yourself, what the fuck are these? Very good question. I haven't got an answer. They're just weird swamp blobs. Not add up. <laughs> They're frogweeds, clearly, but you know. Uh, we are introduced now to the combat of this game, which is basically button mash circle and uh, cross your fingers and you'll get there eventually. You know, that's, that's <laughs> basically how I do it. He's the voice of Cusco from Emperor's New Groove. How exciting. I don't think I've ever watched that. Now we have Spooky Snake Tunnel, hey, which I always cheating. loved. We're not allowed, in there. <gasps> yeah, not allowed inside the excuses. snake tunnel. Catch up or give up, Chunky. Dun, dun, dun. Um... This game came out at the peak of things must be measured. Oh, but it's still an enjoyable script for what I remember. I think it is too. It's very combat heavy, and if you don't enjoy the combat, well, there's a lot of it, so you have to get used to it. But I personally bloody love it. Has everybody seen a giant purple thing around here? I seem to have lost mine. Oh, the animations for Spyro are so cute. Yeah, yeah, cutie. Also, how have they lost each other? He's right there. Anyhow. Anyhow. <laughs> oh, frog weeds. Hello, hello, hello. And bop. Nice. Ow. Ow, you absolute piece of shit. <laughs> Hello. Do you know what? I don't even think we need to kill these frogweeds. Let's just let's let nature survive. Let's just glide past it. Let's let it do its own thing. Anyhow, welcome to something you're going to have to get used to seeing and hearing. The combat music and the enemies. I thought all you guys was gone. Miserable coward, let me go! <laughs> Don't let him get away! Oh yeah, we're gonna beat people up. Welcome to the combat music, you're gonna hear this a lot. And welcome to monkeys. These are the enemy that you will face 90% of the time, the entire game. Or apes, I don't know what they are technically. I think they might be called apes technically, but um, they're, they're, they're everywhere. They're all over the place. These are the enemies. These are the bad guys. You better get used to them. <laughs> oh, they also have uh, randomly generated names for some reason. You can see in the top right there. They all just have names picked from a selection. Uh, we've got Neonix Riftworm. We've got If Foot Grimblade. I don't know why they decided all the enemies needed their own randomly generated names, but they do, apparently. Uh, good to know. Oh, dear me. Anyhow, Dynamite exists now. We can bash it away with a big circle. Wonderful stuff. Mm pretty, pretty sure they're based on mandrills. I would love to know what is a mandrill. If you have the um, time to explain such a thing. Like, like I thought that was called Bloody Strap Home. It was called Sort Home or something. How interesting. Hello. Goodbye. Yes, yeah, throughout the various different areas you play this game in, you will face the monkeys or the apes. And, um. They're basically recolored to suit the area. Which I never cared about as a kid, but looking back, you're always like, oh, yes, more apes. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> Hell yeah, what was that? Was that fire, dude? I was, yes. Take care of him. I gotta report to sender. Dun dun dun. Anyhow, more monkey times. Uh, they're an old world primate. Rafiki from Lion King is a mandrel. Ooh, interesting. And yeah, we can now breathe fire because we got a bit scared that Sparks was going to die and we went, no! Uh, so now we have fire breath. <laughs> One of the four breaths you learn throughout the game. Fire, electricity, ice, and earth. Earth's the best, so of course you unlock it the last. Oh, shit. No! Yeah, get used to beautiful boys acting like that. Sometimes I wonder, um, I think I remember hearing that this, this game and its sequel and the sequel after it, uh, the entire trilogy um, suffered from a desperate lack of budget. And sometimes I wonder if that budget was entirely blown on the voice acting cast, because we've just got Elijah Wood, just casually, just Elijah Wood and Gary Oldman, just the two main speaking characters apart from Sparks, essentially, just having a time. God bless him. You okay? You almost torched me, dude. Wait. Anyhow. Breathe fire! <laughs> so I'm just about ready to blow the top off that place and kick that guy's booty when Spyro let loose with some serious flame, dude. No joke. Flames from the mouth. Well, I, I, I was just trying to help. No, yeah, some help. He nearly turned me to ashes, dude. Mom, Dad, you should have seen him. He came out breathing fire. Fire. Right, I tell you, it was crazy. 
Also, get used to this dialogue. You don't believe me? Spyro, tell him. Well, it's true, Dad. I swear. I just got real mad, opened my mouth, and whoosh! Flame City. It's not that, Spyro. I believe you both. It's just that your mother and I knew this day would come. What day? The day when we would have to tell you the truth. So that was the night that Spyro learned he wasn't a dragonfly after all, but in fact an exile from an unknown distant land. Gasp. So it's actually not that distant, to be honest. You Although if you're a dragonfly, it's quite distant, son. I suppose. You are our real son. It's just that you came from somewhere else. Far away, where wars rage on and on, and the innocent seem to always pay the price. It wasn't long after that night that Spyro decided to venture forth and find his home. So that's it, huh? Leaving sparks behind the old homestead? Not a care in the world. Don't look back. This is your home, Sparks. But I just found out that my home is out there somewhere, and I've got to find it. Besides, I'm not leaving you behind. I'm just leaving you where you belong. Well, I thought I belonged with you, because I'm always with you. But I guess I was wrong, huh? I'm sure I'm wrong in a lot of things. You know what? You're right, I'm wrong. Don't worry about him, Spyro. You know how hot-headed he can be. You'll see him when you get back. Now, now, son. Keep your head up, your nose clean, and use that breath of yours wisely. All gifts come with a price. Don't listen to your father's preaching, Spyro. The face on that father's dra himself. dragonfly's face. His, his face is... It's quite a stare. It's quite a look. He's sort of just gazing off into the eternal abyss. It's quite scary, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he blinks or not. Yeah, the dragonfly mom. Yeah, yeah, with the Pixar hips and the... Yeah. It was, Spyro left oh, the only family he had ever known and journeyed on to where he did not know. <laughs> don't know where it is, but there's definitely going to be apes. Dragonflies are terrifying. They are, aren't they? They're quite scary. I don't. You'll be glad to know we only ever see sparks from now on, but that was still an experience on its own. Ooh, some dramatic camera panning. Monkeys jumping all over these mushrooms. Don't know why, but they are. Oh, Sparrow's little scared face, where his pupils go absolutely tiny, is so. I don't know how to feel about it, but it's definitely something. Oh, God bless him. What a goofy little blob. I love him. Anyhow, back to happy swamp times. And now we're sort of... We're not into the... We're into the meat of this level. We're out of the tutorial sort of a bit. We're just in the meat of the tutorial level now, as it were. Frogweeds. Again, we don't have to kill them, so quite frankly, I'm, I'm just going to leave them be. We don't need to kill frogweeds. It's a bit rude, isn't it? More swamp exploration. However, I am going to kill the next enemy we see because... It's um, mushroom spiders. This one's called pine root old oak, and it's a mushroom spider. Take a minute to appreciate that. It it does that towards you. It spins and flies, and it's terrifying. And they make weird noises, and I quite like them, actually. As a design, I quite like them. They are a bit terrifying, though, so I'm just going to slowly torch this one. There we go. Goodbye, bright weed, weed bramble. You like weed, don't you, in your name? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Press XX to double jump. Hold X to glide. Thank you, game. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're not rid of Sparks for long, are we? Belonging thing, you know, came up, and we decided that best friends belong together. Even Wonderful. Do we do. have to call Sparks a best friend? Well, at least I've never been turned into a lantern. Oh please, lantern schmantern. Let's see what's out there. Lantern schmantern. Gripping dialogue, everyone. <laughs> Let's go for a wander. All right, more um, spidery things I don't really care about. Goodbye. Okay, ape times. Typically when apes show up, you do have to kill them. They're, they're typically not necessarily avoidable. Alrighty, it's big ape combat time. Let's go. Got a fire breath. We've got a circle button to mash. We've got dynamite. We've got all sorts. We've got... <laughs> We're very into that. Oh, dear. Hell yeah. This is, this is my favorite thing. This game, gameplay-wise, is 90% just combat sections where you press A, not press A, press circle and hope for the best and you win. But honestly, you better get used to it. It's wonderful. I love it so much, but you better get used to it. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's a little bit of platform and puzzling, but uh, it's it's not much. Not much, my friends. God, there's some terrifying enemies coming up in a second. They absolutely tormented me for hours as a kid. I could never get past them. They're bloody awful, they were. Bloody awful. Anyhow. 
get used to hearing monkeys scream and shout and scream and mob screaming and shouting and yep. Ow! Oh, Sparrow got bonked. Got bonked a couple times, actually. So, the usual stuff. You can see up there in a top left, we've got the health bar, we've got the um, Magicka Juice bar. You know, the Magicka Juice bar. Um, which we use fire breath to fire with. The usual stuff. Enemies drop gems, obviously very different from the gems you'd be used to from the first three games, uh, which will rec recover these. So red gems give you health back, green gems give you magic juice back. There is no collectible in this game, not that I can remember anyhow. Boop boop. Alrighty, big bad boy times. Look at these absolute stompers. Bump. Hello! Can't see you for the rock in the way. There we go, we've got green, big, swampy, these things. There's two of them, they smack you with clubs. We can actually just avoid them. They're very dangerous, but we could just walk past them and keep going, which is hilarious, and I love that. I love it so much. Alrighty. Hello, apes. How are you all doing? Good, good, good. Huge mushroom lands, are we in Morrowind? Honestly, we might as well be. It's... <laughs> If, uh, in terms of an otherworldly um, landscape, we're going from the first three Sparrow games to this, it's definitely, it's definitely a change. It's definitely a, um, it's otherworldly, all right, and I love it for that. I really do. Ooh. All right. You enjoyed the first load of cinematics. Now get ready for some more. Also, scared dragon noises. Oh, God, I hope your happy place is far away from his box. <laughs> I have no idea, but uh, I'm going this way, far from it. Which brings us to the moment that Spyro's journey really began. Bum, bum, bum. And he and I finally met again <gasps> for the very first time. The whole, it's a long story. Hello. And I thought you were a big one. Goodness. <laughs> you're, you're alive, but it's too late. Too late. Too late. Too late for what? Who are you? Do you know me? Where do I come from? What are you? What are we? What am I? Oh, you mean you don't little sparksy waxy. Does it sound like he knows? Fair point. You're a dragon. When you were just an egg, it was my job to protect you. It was my job to protect all of you. There are others? Others? They were. There were four of us. Guardians, that is, and we had one job. Ensure that all the. You had one job, but you fucked it up. <laughs> it was the year of the dragon, after all, mm -hmm. and our very survival Wink. depended on those eggs. But the temple and grotto are now gone. Overrun by. Temple? What temple? Can you take me? Can I see it? Where I came from, I mean? No, no, no. Who knows what forces occupy the temple now? What state it's in, you don't understand. After they came, it just sounds like he's whispering or like half asleep. It's so strange. I love it. Because the prophecies spoke of oh, more prophecies. Dragon, Here we go. A dragon born only once every ten generations. Oh. You. You. <laughs> Does that mean him? Oh, wait, this guy Spyro, some special once in a purple thing. <laughs> I think you might uh, mix that one up. Whoa, that's a little bit of a stretch. Fuck you, Sparks. I've some uh, doozies in my day, but that takes the cake. All right, shut up, Sparks. Spyro. We've had enough of you now. <laughs> well, Spyro, I assure you that I'm telling you the truth. The Dark Arm is attacked, intent on destroying the eggs and killing the rest of us. And they nearly succeeded. And then they lay siege to the other island. We were at war. Ooh, more cutscene. Do you know this never ends? That generally, this first part of the game is just cutscene after cutscene after dialogue after dialogue. It just <laughs> love it, but it's a bit slow of a start if you're um, not ready for it. The dark master who was intent on preventing the prophecies from coming true. With a shit ton of apes. The other three guardians and I led our small but valiant forces into battle after battle against our ruthless mercenary foe. That dragon looks very happy and, and cute. We begin to turn the tide. Cinder came. Bum, bum, bum. Cinder? Yes, Cinder. Cinder was, is, monstrous, horrific, ferocious, 
black dragon that fills the skies with terror. An unstoppable force of nature. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, you had me at ferocious. Listen, sounds like that thing that was chasing us, Spyro. Yes, yes the quality has dipped, by the way, because we're in a cutscene. <laughs> years ago, I watched a cinder plucked the other guardians from the fields of battle, like so many ripe grapes from a vine. Without them, our cause is lost. Only I, Ignitus, Hello. managed to escape. That's him. Not that it matters. Cinder now rules all, and I sit here wondering what might have been. What else I might have done. Well, that was wow. fun. Good catch up. Sounds fun. <laughs> I want to hang out with this guy. Me too. Yeah. Why have you given up? I just find out that I'm this special dragon, and you tell me all is lost? That I have no home or family left? I've come way too far to give up now. It's come way too far. Come a whole five from. meters from his house. Savior boy, were you not listening to this guy? He's talking about flying dragons and war and horrible. This is bad stuff, all right? I don't know if we're hearing the same thing. Yes, Spyro. It's not as simple as that. It's true the prophecies spoke of the purple dragon destined to put his stamp on this age. But the prophecies didn't foretell the devastation that surrounds us now. Maybe you're right, but I'm willing to try. I want to take the first step. You're actually going to go along with this lunatic. Very well, then. We'll go. You deserve to see your beginning before it all ends. Your new beginning, if you will. Am I the only one saying here? He's telling us we're doomed, all right? That's when I go, ah, maybe we should, you know, go back to the forest with the flowers and the fun stuff. All right, Sparks, we get it. <laughs> oh, dear me. All right, we're getting through it now. We're getting into the meat and the bones of the, the heavy, the heavy working things out and finding, learning the story sort of vibes. Welcome to the temple. Or the swamp going into the temple, as it were. And cutscene. <laughs> oh, I love it. It makes me happy. Cinder's soldiers must have knocked the other two statues out of place. Heathens. What other two statues? On the other side of this door are two statues just like these. When all four statues are positioned correctly, the door opens. <gasps> yeah, good. I was never good at geometry. So what do you want us to do? Spyro, I need you to get in there and move the statues in place. Me? How? There's a small tunnel that animals use to access the caves. Find it and use it. Yeah, animals. Are, okay, you know what? You do that, and I'll wait here. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the backstory ones are fucking awesome. Really heavy fantasy legend vibes. Absolutely. No, no, I do love them. I will stay. If I ever give this game a hard time, I promise you, I love it very much. I really do love this game. It's my absolute childhood, and I think it did so many things well. I really do appreciate it. However, I like to point out the dumb things. All right, bit of a jump and a glide. Avoid the uh, spider things because uh, they seem all right. Don't need to kill them, do we? Hey, when in doubt, break it, right? Go nuts. Great advice, Sparks. Great advice. Let's do a head bash. Pop. Ooh, lovely slow-mo. And spider time. Ooh, the combat music's back. <laughs> bump, bump, bump. Palm Hub Spring Heel. I swear these names are so strange. It's it's a weird little detail that they decided to include. The enemies have random generated names. It's very strange. But you can clearly tell they're basically, you know, there's a prefix and a suffix and it just sort of mashes, mixes them up together and generates a random prefix and suffix and mushes them together sort of thing. You know, it's, it's very, <laughs> every name is in two different parts. It's, it's quite entertaining. I do like it. Alrighty. So we've got generic puzzly stuff to do. We've got statues to move into place, things to kill, bits and bobs to get on with. Um, we can move these statues into place first, or we can kill the enemies and then do so. Let's do that first, because quite frankly, it becomes an absolute trot trying to move these things while these spiders are trying to spin their legs around your face. It's not very, it's not very productive. There we go. I will say, as much as I adore this game, I think it does... Yeah, it, it starts off fairly slow, which you kind of want it to for the start of the game, right? You want it to be, you know, a little bit of a gentle easing into it. All right, this is the game. This is how it's played. This is the sort of vibe we're going for. It's quite a few cutscenes. It's quite cutscene heavy, I'm going to be honest. It's very, you know, you take five steps and it's like, all right, let's take a break to watch Sparks and Spyro talk about something. 
Like, it's cool. Could we do gameplay at the same time? No, it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Spyro Spider name generator. Hell yeah. It's not just the spiders. It's every one of them. It's all of the enemies. I love it so much. Hello. Oh, Ignitus. What a babe. We love him very much. Any trouble? A little insect trouble. Nothing I couldn't handle. Sparks. Little insects. My tail section. My tail section. What does that even mean, Sparks? <laughs> oh, dear me. The past is prelude to model a dim promise. Allow us entrance. Do not reject us. That didn't even rhyme. It should open for us. There is a disturbance. It seems my fears have been realized. They've desecrated the interior as well. I feel like this was yes, something we knew already, but okay. What's that, Ignitus? Make your way through the connecting rooms, restoring every statue you can find. Hey, you know what? Let's don't and say we didn't. Why don't you do it? You want my help? Very well. Hop up. All right, All Ignitus right. is taking us for walkies. The old guy's coming to life. Boop. Boop. Bop. Hell yeah. Spiral. Zinder's forces are surely on their way. Okay. We'll look out for apes. Hell yeah. And away we go. This is a gem cluster, everyone. Let's talk about what just happened. Hey, Spiral, what was that about? <laughs> I don't really know. I just felt like I had to hit it. And when I did, the power of a thousand suns surged through my body. A thousand suns, you say? Right. Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? You should really sleep better. You know, I'm going to stop bugging you. You uh -huh. really need to get eight hours. You do, yes. Forget I said anything. Let's go. <laughs> Sometimes I hate Sparks. Sometimes he's not entirely incorrect. You know, he's a bit all over the place he is. Tail section equals my ass. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. But provided to do without saying it. It just, just feels a bit strange to hear Sparks saying that. It didn't, I don't know if it quite translated as. Anyhow. Uh, you're going to play Eternal Light and Tom the Dragon. Uh, on stream or in general, I have played... I completed it at the um, Eternal Night last year sometime for the first time. It's a game that I had as a kid. I absolutely struggled with it though. The difficulty spikes in that game for the second game. Um, I completed it for the first time on stream last year. Um, and I actually completed that game. And it was wonderful. I'd never seen the ending before. It was great. I was like, oh my god, this is like new old Spyro. It's amazing. Uh, Dawn of the Dragon, I think I have completed once but a very, very long time ago. I've never touched it on stream. Alright, let's go walkies. Uh, but we only ever had Dawn of the Dragon on the Wii. That was where we had it, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't think it translated very well. I don't think the Wii controls were the best for it. They weren't they weren't my favourite anyhow. Bop. Although it, it was a very different game. I think it was even developed by different people towards the end. Uh, on stream. I have played them I have played the Eternal Night on stream and this in the entirety of this game on stream, uh before. But it was a while ago. I would love to revisit them sometime. I uh, I don't know when. I don't know if it's something I'm planning on doing, but I would love to do it at some point. It would be wonderful. I would uh, I would enjoy it. So it's a definite maybe. <laughs> Dawn of the Dragon is a more questionable maybe, because I would have to either connect my bloody Wii That's quite an entrance, yeah, to my computer, or find a good Wii emulator, which I don't yet. know if that exists or not. Alrighty, into the temple further. After a brief loading screen. All right, gem talk. <laughs> what are these things? These are spirit gems. A gift from the ancestors. Ooh, kind of gameplay mechanic. A gift that speaks across generations. A gift that empowers you with the spirit of the past, strengthening you with the wisdom of the ages. I feel more powerful already. Wonderful. All right, smack some gems. I'm just going to quickly speed this section up because you can't skip this scrolling text. It's just slow as fuck and that's, that's all you can do with it. This is the sped up version. This is the sped up version. It's I love it so much, but this game has a few little wonky second sections. Alrighty, let's continue our walkies. Do you hear that? I do. What is it? Exactly what I feared. More apes. Look, Spyro. Perhaps we should turn back. What? After coming this far? If this door is closed, it means there are intruders behind. It's Gasp. how the temple protects itself. 
Uh, yeah, it doesn't work too well, does it? Uh -huh. So, what are you saying, Ignitus? What I'm saying is the only way the door will open... Don't say it! ...is if the intruders are kicked out of there. Didn't I just say don't say it? You say a lot of things, Sparks, to be honest. I never listen to them. Alright, let's uh, do classic pillar bashing. My favourite. Took me an embarrassingly long time to figure that out as a kid. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Don't the Dragon has the most gorgeous valley section. It does. I know exactly where you mean. This is when you first enter it. It's sort of a, a nighttime bit, and you go further into it, and it proceeds to like a full daytime thing. It's gorgeous. I have vague memories of that place. I didn't get much further. No, I did. I did complete the game once, but a very long time ago. I don't have much memory of it, I'm afraid. But yeah, Don the Dragon. Eternal Night. I could definitely potentially see myself doing on stream. Um, Dawn of the Dragon is a bigger maybe. It's a bigger question mark because um, hooking up the Wii to um, to my computer sounds uh, interesting and questionable at best. Um, there is a PS2 version of the game, but that has uh, dramatically reduced graphics because well, it's trying to run on the PS2, not the uh, the Wii or PS3 or other things in line with that. Bomb. Apes just smacked themselves through that wall like it was nothing. Like it was nothing. Uh, look through, I still have my copy of it. What um, platform did you play it on? I'd be interested to find out. I um, I think, I, here's the thing, I went down a deep pit of nostalgia and I have ordered myself the PS2 version, just because I think personally that'll be a bit more playable for me, anyhow. Um, and I have the Wii version downstairs somewhere, but like I say, it's not my favourite platform to play it on. Xbox, I think. Oh, wow, interesting. Of course, yeah. Ah, wonderful. Alrighty. This is a cute little section. I'm gonna be honest. This is a cute little section. Dun, 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 dun. Let's ignite some fuses with Fire Blast. Ooh. Oh, where's the camera gone? Boom. <laughs> Monkey go boom. And so they did. Alrighty, let's drink up these delicious, delicious gems. Om nom 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 nom. And go smack a monkey. Oh, well, they died quick. <laughs> the explosion got them towards the end. We just finished them off. Alrighty. Whee! Job's done. It's cleared out. Uh oh. Well, okay, less cleared out now, actually. Ooh, we got a big one. You can tell it's the big boss one because it has purple. Ooh, hello, Ignatius. Oh, look at him, he's all protected. Well, Ignitus, we nabbed your guardian buddies, but you managed to escape our clutches. Until now. <gasps> da -da -da. Stand back, Spyro. And let me show you what a dragon trained in the ancient ways can do. Yeah, Ignitus, fuck him up. Go get him. I believe in you. We'll just sit in the corner and hope they don't bother us. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, tail swipe, get him. Oh, I want to run into the camera. Whoa, the big guy's got some moves. I love how we're just spectators, that's quite cute. Bop. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Uh oh. Fire go boom. <laughs> Are you okay, Ignitus? Do you know what the worst part about this bit is? As I get older, it takes longer to recover. Those enemies all drop gems. You are incredible, Ignitus. Can you show me how to do that? And we are not allowed to collect Patience, them. Young Look at them. They're there. Soon I just want to touch them. To but teach. I can't. We can't. We're locked in a cutscene. Right we can't go get them. Must fight. We can't, we can't go get the gems. We're just going to leave those gems on the floor. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. It does. Anyhow, more monkey times. Look, they even shut the door behind us. We can't go get the... Ignitus left the gems on the floor. What an absolute piece of shit. How dare. How... <laughs> How absolutely dare. All right. Please, Mr. Dragon, the gems. I know, right? If only. If only. Genuinely, that section broke my heart as a kid. I was like, gems, I want to collect them, but I can't wait. No, I can't pick up the gems tasty. 
Gems make me happy. Nope, can't touch. Ignatius is too old and too cool for gems. He's like, no, no. We leave gems behind like cool people. It's, it's like, it's the dragon version of walking away from explosion and with your back turned to it, not looking at it. It's, it's you know, instead of cool people don't look at explosions, it's cool dragons don't collect their gems. It's <laughs> They kill the enemies and just leave the gems. They don't even need them. They're too cool. <laughs> Alrighty. Hello, Gooba Longsnake. That's a name and a half. Believe me, I can put that one into the filter. Or, uh, that's it. Uh, yep, that, that one's dead. Oh, shit, gems, gems. Oh, fuck. Alrighty. Oh, God. See, did you see it? That gem was still through there. There's still a gem on the floor. Anyhow. Oh, God, there's even more gems lying around. I think we can get these ones, though. Oh, God, maybe we can't. Oh, no, maybe if we can't. If forces were here, there would certainly be more of them in the temple. Oh, goody. They won't be there for long. Wonderful. Now he's getting cocky. Ah, oh, wonderful stuff. Oh, oh, no, we can get the gems, thank goodness. Not the ones behind us, but at least these ones. These will do. Anyhow, let's walk five steps. More cutscenes, please. Oh, dear. Ooh, green puddle. <laughs> yes, Ignatius did just tail swat sparks, intentionally or otherwise. Home. Sweet home. Bom, bom, bom. Ooh, dragon. Butterflies. Pretty. <laughs> Side eye. Anyhow, this is basically this bit here, or this next little bit, once we've killed these guys, is um, what I like to call a disguised loading time. That's what I think it is, at the very least. Let's just, uh, get rid of these apes real quick. Boop, boop, boop. There's one slightly big one, and just a horde of small ones. Bloody annoying. Honestly, the small ones aren't even bad, they're just more annoying than anything else. David Spade makes Sparks like... <laughs> Honestly, Sparks is an absolute asshole in this game. It's heartbreaking stuff. Anyhow, let's progress. Forwards. Oh, we can't. Let's see what's behind us. Maybe we've missed something. Oh. Oh, Ignitus is on the way. Okay, let's just wait for Ignitus. Let's just... <laughs> let's just give the old dragon some time. He needs to waddle his way around here. We we just be patient. I'm sure he'll... Hurry the fuck up, Ignitus, please. <laughs> I always found this section very strange. And looking back on it, I'm like, well, maybe it was just a loading time disguised. He's old. He is old, but couldn't we have skipped it with a cutscene? Anyhow, speaking of cutscenes, now we can activate the cutscene. Alrighty, big old rousing speech time. Made it to the temple. Or the end of the temple. Alright, Sparks, we get it. Don't break the fourth wall. <laughs> Shocked dragon face. That's such a cute little foot. What's he doing? What's he doing? Fun fact, he can't see shit over that wall. So this view we're about to see, he can't see it. He can only see the sky. He's just that impressed at the sky. He's like, oh, pretty sky. Although, to be fair, he could see it. Just a lot of mushrooms. It's not very exciting. This is what Cinder has done. I'm not turn everything into a mushroom. I don't... Put all the islands under her iron rule. I nah, just was like the swamp. I don't know what you're on I about. I wanted to see where I came from, but I didn't know it was going to be like this. Swampy? This is literally yeah, no the swamp. Offense, you live here. Place is a bit of a dump. Again, it's the sp Sparks. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> this was once our home, Spyro. Together we can make it our home once again. Reclaim what's rightfully ours. What do you mean? I mean that my time for heroics is past. But with your help, we might be able to beat Cinder. Hell yeah. I can't, Ignitus. I just learned what I am. You can, Spyro. You can. Oh, hello, you creepy side. <laughs> Where did he sneak in from? Very special creature. He's very intimate and close and low and up close and personal. You can space, Spyro. Hope again. It's Ignitus. And now it's time to give hope to all of them. All of the mushrooms. 
I'm not sure what help I can be, Ignitus, but I'll try. No, boy, sim. I'll try. Ooh, determined face. Good. Hell yeah. That's all I can ask. Now come with me. Mm. I have something for you. Wonderful. The style you used earlier is crude, archaic, and obvious. All right. But you got the job done. Not bad, considering you haven't been taught anything about what it means to be a dragon. Thanks. <laughs> but if you're going to have a chance against Cinder and her army, you're going to need to learn a lot more. Oh, good school. <laughs> Unlike any school you've ever known, young friend. The dragonflies have a school. Let's not question that. Now it's time to unleash the true dragon within you. Bomb. Each of the guardians is master of an element. Oh god, he's still talking. I, as you may have surmised, am master of fire. I do love Ignitus. I'm gonna be honest, he's gorgeous. Pay attention. And you may be someday too. Let's begin. Anyhow, totally normal rising, falling platform statue. Welcome to the training section That's of the game. Impressive and uncommon. But now let's see if you can master it. Oh, the textures up close. This game is old. It is like the flat mushrooms in the background. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's so. You, you don't notice things when you're a kid, and then you come back to it and you're like, Oh god, it's so old. I love it. It's so old. Anyhow, this is the temple training section. This first one is very long. You you get, you come back here and you learn how to master your new element of... Or um, well, the new breath that you learn uh, whenever you learn your new breath. However, this first one also teaches you the basics of combat as well, so it's a bit lengthier. And quite frankly, it's not particularly exciting. You just sort of work your way through it and hope for the best. Very good, young Spyro. We've completed that task. Now we wait for Sparks to say something. Spyro, come here. And then we go to where Sparks is. This time, and we do the next one. Chase after dummies and burn them. Alright. So it's basically teaching you how to use your different abilities that you've got so far. So this one is like, oh, you can use your fire breath to chase enemies. Ooh, and stun them. And quite frankly, this is the worst one to go. Get back here, you little piece of shit. Get back here. These dummies are awful. They don't attack you. They just run away from you. Well, some of the attack. It depends on the... Um, also, yes, the dummies are ape-shaped. They're... they're <laughs> magical ape-shaped dummies. Of course they are. Of course they are. Every enemy's ape-shaped. Oh, dear me. I remember thinking this game was... <laughs> it's so realistic. Yes. I'm here like, Nate, what were you thinking? <laughs> oh, dear me. When I first replayed this game on stream last year sometime... You awaken my hopes once more. Wonderful. Um... I remember being a little bit worried. I was like, I haven't played this game in a while. Is it going to hold up? Is it going to be the game that I loved as a child? Is it going to be... Oh. And honestly, I was pleasantly surprised. I think it genuinely is a decent game. I don't think it's even that bad. I love it. Anyhow. We're well into the combat ones now, where it's like, ooh, there are technically combos. If you hold circle, you knock them into the air, and then you can do big spinny things and knock them away. Ooh, wonderful. However, you don't really need to remember these combos. You just sort of do them by smashing buttons and it works out well. Uh, this one is teaching you that you can horn dash or horn dive. That's something that's boop, 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 boop. And you have to do it to all of the enemies, of course. Like, I think we get the concept by the third one, but you know what? Let's just kill them all. Look, Ignitus wants us to. Let's do it to please the old man. We love him very much. He is very wonderful. He's a great father figure. We want to give him many hooks. Come here. Let us continue. Melee them. Cool. One, two, three. Shit. One, two, three, four. X. One, two. <laughs> when I say that the combat is just mashing, mashing circle, that's I don't mean it. that that's the easiest way to do it. I mean literally the fight button is circle and you just mash it and then sometimes Let's jump. It's... <laughs> Oh dear. Anyhow, we can hold circle and then jump and then horn dash or horn dive even to knock it away real far. Yeah. Yes, Spyro. Wait till you tell the folks about this. Are you gonna tell the folks about this? Over here. Or horn bash someone. <laughs> oh dear. And another way to knock them into the air is just smack them enough. Instead of holding circle, just smack them enough times and they'll go in the air. I got very, very... I'm going to be honest, as a kid, this section, this training section, took me so long to get through. This next bit in particular 
It's teaching you, all right, you can knock enemies into each other, but you have to knock them into each other to complete this bit. So you get pairs of enemies and you have to aim and knock them into each other. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if aiming is this game's particular strength. I don't know if it's <laughs> particularly built for it. However, I'm gonna be honest, I'm good. <laughs> Like, there's not many games I get to look at it and say, all right, I'm, a I'm not bad at this game. This game is one of them. But then again, it's also quite easy. It's a bit hard to be now too bad at it. So. To well, I can't say that to my old self. I was bad at it as a kid. Let's see. Boop. Ow, no. Absolute fucker. Go. Okay, a little bit further. You absolute fucker. <laughs> Hell yeah. Goodbye, dojo dummies. You all disappear into delicious, delicious gems. I am over here. Ooh, now we're getting onto the fire training. We have learned our... So every breath has two abilities. It has the generic breathe it ability, and it has the triangle ability, as I like to call it, which is usually ranged. In this case... Oh, shit, we're running out of time. Oh, God, we're going to run out of time. In this case... Ah, there we go. It is a ranged firebomb sort of affair. Let's go boom and make a lot of noise and make a lot of visual screen clutter. It's very wonderful. Alrighty. Hello, you lot. This one's teaching us that you can kill things from afar. I think we know that, but thank you. Also, we didn't need the small ones to teach us that. These are big boogers. Oh, too high. Come on, you. Honestly, the hardest part of this game is trying to figure out what's going on with all of the everything going on the screen all at once. Combat can be very messy sometimes. It could, it's every, the, the screen is just coloured in bright colours, and you can't see anything that's going on. There's fire everywhere, there's dynamite exploding, there's loud noises, nothing makes sense. It's <laughs> It can be a very messy game. But at the same time, I kind of like that. It's a nice style. Well, so far, it's, it's so a good. style. I, don't, <laughs> I like it. Ah oh, yes, the real challenge. This way, oh I think we're at the end of the training now. We're in the middle you this time. And this is teaching us the last of our elemental ability. The last sort of thing in our um, our repertoire. Our um, section of abilities. We have to kill these enemies to fill the purple bar around our fire icon in the top left. It's only a little purple bar, uh, but enemies drop purple gems. And we will be able to, once it is filled, cast a fury. Ooh. Remember that big fire explosion Ignite us did? Yeah, we're just going to do one of them, basically. Just another big fire explosion, but we do it, and we're cool. Furies are big and powerful abilities, and they kill most things on the screen, basically. It's sort of your, your big... You, you save up for it, you know, you use it in tricky situations. Uh, they don't normally build up this quickly. It's just for training purposes, they're giving us fury gems as much as they can. There we go. All right, let's do a fury. Ba -ba 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 Boom. Ooh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now that, I'm gonna be honest, was absolutely gorgeous. I do love that. I think that was fucking cool. All right, training done. Easy. Next, moving on. We are actually moving on now. We're getting into the proper meat of the game now. This marks the end of the tutorial training area. We're out of the swamp now. We're out of the temple. We're done. We've, we've progressed. We've learned things. Ignitus is happy with us. A couple more cutscenes and we'll be done. Uh, we float in the air, if I remember right. We do a little bit. Did you jump into the air to do the fury? Of course I did. Of course I did. How am I not going to do that? We're doing magical jumpy floaty times. Of course I'm going to jump to do it. <laughs> you did that every time? Excellent. I'm glad that great minds think alike. Did Sparks just dip his tail in the... <laughs> Sparks, made the fuck out of here. <laughs> so what's with the poor big guy? Oh, dear. If you must know... Even Certain dragons have the ability to see vision. Even Ignitus is fucked off with sparks already. God bless. Of others, and to see what's happening in places far, far away. I am one such dragon, and in this pool, visions come forth. Ooh, we got visions. Oh, really? Is that so? Okay, what am I thinking now? I don't think that's how it works, Sparks. What am I thinking now? Okay, now, <laughs> now. Now, 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 the now, distraught now. Ignitus face of just uh, it's not that easy, <laughs> roll eyes. God it bless. Takes time, reflection, and patience. Things that spark what lacks. I do see in the pool of visions is that Voltia, one of the guardians, is being held on Dante's freezer. Dante's freezer, you say? Spido, while it's I not an actual freezer, I'm going to be honest. I want you to venture there and find out what you can. 
Remember, just look around. If you encounter Cinder, run. You're not ready to face her yet. Okay, so when people are trying to kill me, I run? Got it. But, Ignitus, how do we get there? A good question. I'm glad you asked. Bum, bum, bum. Are you smiling? I don't like it. I don't think I would call that smiling, but okay. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You're saying that I can fly? You have wings, Spire. Maybe you've been hanging in those caves a little too long, old man. Spyro can't fly, we all know that. Yeah, a bit of fresh air might do you good. I've, I've never flown in my life. It's you that will be getting some fresh air, Spyro. Ha ha ha, it is you that will be now, getting the fresh air. <laughs> close your eyes. Oh, I love this game. And empty your mind. Ooh. All yes. right. Yes, that's it. Now feel the power of your ancestors coursing through your body. In times of crisis, they will come to you and teach you. Unlocking powers you never knew you had. A nice bit of exposition. Oh, I, I gotta see. <laughs> Just forget everything you ever thought you knew. Forget yourself. Only through forgetting will you remember what your ancient blood already knows. Ooh. Flappy flap flap. Bwam bwam bwam. Hell yeah. Flying dragons. Who would have thought of it, right? <laughs> Alrighty, now for a gameplay section that only occurs twice in the entire game. But they just change it up. Just, just twice. Only twice. It's not a bad section, but to be honest, it's not particularly challenging or interesting. You just sort of sit through it more than anything. But we're going to have a bit of a fly now. Just a bit, not much of a fly. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, maybe don't fly with your eyes closed, Spyro. Don't look down either. Goodness me. Someone teach this dragon how to fly properly. <laughs> Instead of just saying, uh, feel it in your Are blood. You kidding? He's flying. Welcome to the club, big guy. How could Sparks keep up with him? Would Let's be honest. Be annoying pest club? Hmm? No smart aleck, the flying club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could get used to this. Sadly, we won't. <laughs> Oh dear. Gorgeous little sea, isn't it? Wood. I love the little I love the look of the clouds. They're so bubbly and cute. I wanna eat them. I wanna eat them. Um, nom, 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 nom. Uh, anyhow, we speed up. We slow down. Bob. Bob. And in this mode, for some reason, move like slowing down and speeding up will drain our magicka. You can see the top left. But our magicka also regenerates. And also we don't have fire breath, we just have our triangle shot. Our lovely old that 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 that. that. And basically, it's an on-rails section, and then you just you just you just sort of survive it. You don't need to kill the enemies on it. You don't need to avoid too well. You, you, you avoid a few bits, but it's mostly just enjoying the view and just going for a bit of a ride until the game says, "All right, we're done with that now. We can carry on." <laughs> it's very strange. It's a weird little section, um, but it only happens twice. That almost makes it even weirder. Also, hello, graphical glitch turtle. Look at you, you little. Square of water around you. Hi, friend. <gasps> You've got so many legs. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you a lot. Oh, I love you a lot. You're very cool. <laughs> Can anyone describe what noise it's making? Me either. Bye, friend. Spoosh. All right. Now they're shooting apes at us. Because that's right. Now the apes are not only weapons. Well, not, not only the main bad guys, they are also weapons themselves, apparently. Question mark? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, dear. Not until Dawn of Dragon, at least then you can fly all the time. Yeah, the third game, they give you flying all the time. Just, just, you can fly everywhere all the time. It's not quite as free as you want it to be. There are, you know, invisible walls, and you, can only, you can't just skip all of the platforming by flying. And there are, you know, certain puzzles where it's like, all right, you can't fly for this one. Um, but yeah. It was a wonderful change of pace, and I remember being very excited for it. I was like, oh my god, you get to fly in this one. Ape cannons. Yeah, the apes are manning the cannons, and they also are the ammo. They get shot out of the cannons. If you can explain any of the logic behind that, I would love to know. But I can't. I have no bloody clue what's happening. They're just... <laughs> There's little apes manning the cannons down there, and then also, they just shoot apes out of themselves. Not got a bloody clue how. Alrighty. I don't like to get on the wick of this game too much for, you know, the repetitive enemy use. I know I've talked about apes quite a lot. But, um, like I say, from what I've heard, 
they didn't have an especially high budget. They were a the, the, the people, the developers, didn't really have too much of a choice. All right, we're getting into icy times now. We are approaching Dante's freezer. Avoid the ice. Avoid the ice. Avoid the monkeys. Like I say, this section is pretty much just on rails. You just sort of survive it more than anything. You can you can take out the cannons and they'll stop firing at you, but they're very easy to dodge. And quite frankly, by the time they've been killed, they're um they're out of the way. You've sort of flown past them by the time you've killed them. It's it's almost a bit pointless. Whee! All right, there it is. There's Dante's freezer. We're to the final approach now, the final stretch. A couple more apes, and we'll be there. And here we are, Dante's Freezer. Cinematic time. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate bear's hearth. I do appreciate that. On oh, the posture check, look at you. Cool as fuck. Thank you very much. Dante's Freezer is a desolate arctic expanse that's littered with the machinery of war. Soldiers and weapons frozen forever in the posture of destruction. You must find Votir before he's lost forever. Bum, bum, bum. A very good question. Uh-oh. This doesn't look good. Brace. That's gonna hurt. Ow. I'm prepared for a baby deer on ice in a second. Here we go. Yeah, maybe this flying thing ain't for me. Just a little wobble, just a little leg wobble, then he's fine. You're carrying all that weight. God bless him. You know, throw a salad in every once in a while. You might be okay. Sparks the weight jokes aren't cool. Yeah, Can we stop, please? I'll stick to the ground for a while. <laughs> Thank you. Good idea. Not exactly a friendly place, huh? Wonder where we should start. Well, I'm no hero like you, but maybe we should take that clearly marked path that leads to the interior. He has a point. He's a piece of shit, but he has a point. Hello. Is it weird that that blinked at me? Just keep moving. Behold, Ice enemies. Alive. Ice keeps alive. These actually, do you know what? To the game's credit, not apes. We have a wonderful undead soldier people. Get a look at them. Yep, they've got beards, they've got they've got red armor. They're actually quite cool. Do you know what? This is one of my favorite areas in the game. It's not particularly invigorating. It's Ice Fortress, right? The snow, but it's it, it, it's very, you know, the music's very dark and foreboding and imposing, but I really like it. Why don't we use this I like it, it's cool. Yeah, it's actually so many weight jokes in this one. Yeah, it's horrendous. I hate it with a passion. Mm-hmm. They did many things with Sparks in this game, and most of them are just not the best. Alrighty, and as you can see, the name generation has continued. Uh, these ones, however, the, the, the soldiers, um, never mind, no more soldiers, we've just got apes now. Uh, the soldiers have their own little format, so they're someone the someone, instead of just prefix, prefix, or prefix, suffix, prefix, suffix. They've got a, a slightly different format. How adorable. Also, are these little skunks on the floor? What are these little things? What are these little... Wibbly wobbly things, the little green eyes. Hello. They've got very cute little motions. Little tiny cats. Little tiny weasels, stoats, snow ferrets. Don't know what they are, but they're very cute. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Alrighty, we have snowballs. We can oh, vaguely control them. We can roll them around the place. Oh, hello, enemies. Behold, everyone. The snow monkeys. These ones have white and brown on them. <laughs> Oop, there we go, and we smack the cannonball. And it does a bit of damage to the gate. Good stuff. Uh, I'm going to break this gate down, and then I'm quickly going to have a two-minute break just to go and refill my water, because I'm just about out. Ooh, ow. Took damage from a snowball then, don't know how. Ta-da, we're through. All right, I'm going to smack this one more. Wonderful stuff. Oh, alrighty, I will be two seconds. Uh, I'm going to go grab some water, have a refill. If anyone else needs to have a refill, uh, if you need a top of anything, need to have a stretch, sit up from your chair, um, have a moment to look away from the screen, just have a blink. Do whatever you need to do. Um, but I'll be back in two seconds. Enjoy. I'm going to... I would leave the music on normally, but it's just weird snowy noises. It's not particularly exciting, so I'll pop the, um, the swamp music back on. Howie, two minutes. I'll be right back.
Ugly ugly, I have returned. Hello, hello, hello. Let's pop back into the game. Alrighty. Oh, look at his little idle animations. I, I know his model in this game is very, very much different to any of his old ones, but I think it's really cute. It's it's cute in such a weird little way. The camera behaves. There we go. Oh, look at him. What a babe. What an absolute... Oh, look. Oh, look around. Look around. He's got such... His eyes are fucking massive, quite frankly. It's quite terrifying, but he's very cute. I love him very much. Wonderful colours. Very bright, very cheery. 
let's carry on, let's explore Dante's Freezer, which can be summarized as cold ice fortress full of apes and ghosts in armor. It's quite cool, I like it a lot. Uh, fun fact, for the longest time as a kid, I, this was the majority of the game I saw. I didn't see much past this point for a very long time, because the boss at the end of this level, I struggled with for so long, until my father gave me the wise advice of just walk up to it and hit it. Now, I'm gonna be honest, that sounds like the most obvious thing in the world, but apparently to me as a kid, that was all I needed, and it worked. And I walked up to it and hit it, and it died, and shockingly, that, that was that was it. That's all I needed to know. Just walk up to it and hit it. <laughs> Great advice, very wise. Oh, dear me. I don't know why I was asking my dad for advice about how to kill a boss in a video game, but um, there you go. I was never really wrong for playing games, so I don't know how or why I thought that would help. But you know what it did? I clearly knew something. <laughs> Alrighty. Believe me, Nick, these apes are everywhere. There we go. Wonderful stuff. Oh, another one, just because we haven't had enough, really. Just one more for good measure. Let's knock you through the wood. There we go. Break ourselves a path. Wonderful stuff. There's a big one up there with a, a bear on his shoulder. Or what looks like a bear on his shoulder. Poor old bear. Uh, now he's taking his shields down for some reason, so we can wobble around here, jump up and say hello. And uh, now introducing my favourite part about this game, that guy fell off the edge and died. Enemies take four damage in this game, and they take it incredibly easily. They can fall off the smallest little incline, and they will take lethal damage from it. It's hilarious. It's so funny. And yes, I use that to my advantage very much often, whenever possible. Especially later on when we learn the electricity breath, which allows you to um, move enemies a lot more freely. You can sort of drag them around with the breath. It's quite interesting. Wonderful stuff. Oh, God, that killed everyone. Look at my neck. All right, fair play. Oh, and another one comes along. Oh, we just killed all the enemies. You've got to replace them with more. How absolutely dare you. <laughs> They come in, jumping from the trees. Go bless them. Yeah, I always love this area as a kid. Remember to press R2 to use your fury if you're being overrun by Cinder's forces. We don't really have enough juice to use a fury yet, but thank you for the reminder game. Good to know. Um, one thing I do love about this game, it is very combat heavy. However, there's no punishment for dying. There is no death-based punishment. If you die, you you don't there's not even a loading screen. You're still in the same area, you just respawn. Just come back to life uh, a few steps away from the battle sort of thing but all the enemies that you've killed are all dead still all the enemies on low health are still on low health so if you're struggling with an area too much just brute force it just spam your face against it just smack your face against it and it'll eventually be done there's no there's no live system you don't respawn too far back normally speaking you just sort of you know it's a boss fight you do go back to the start of the boss I believe what do you even maybe you don't even do that maybe it's sort of the the start of the current phase you're in, because yes, the bosses have phases. They have different health bars, which I enjoy very much. Alrighty. Oh, we have a bit of enemy variation up ahead. Um, the one and only ice cannon. Do you remember those cannons that shot monkeys from before? It's the same, but it doesn't shoot monkeys. It shoots ice. It's, uh... They decided using their own troops as ammunition was probably bad, so instead we're shooting weird icy streamy stuff. It looks like a drink, quite frankly. It looks like a drink. It's, it's very strange. It's like a weird slushy almost. Anyhow. It also takes a few seconds extra to die. For some reason. <laughs> takes a hot minute to give us some gems. Oh dear. Alrighty. Let's carry on. There's some wolves howling the distance there. Thankfully, we don't ever have to fight any wolves. Makes me happy. Alrighty. Ooh, big boys up here. Big ghosty boys up here. Alrighty, so we've seen the small ghost uh, knights, as they are. You think that was Cinder? Oh, that weird uh, flash on the screen, so. possibly. What? Well, it, if it wasn't, it means there's more than one giant evil dragon around here. A very uh, fair point. Yeah, I hope that was Cinder too. <laughs> Wonderful. Alrighty, big fighting time, and yes, that is a giant stack of explosives behind them. Why do they keep so many explosives lying around? I mean, I suppose they throw a dynamite. I suppose that does make sense if they throw dynamite as a weapon. Also, roll casks of explosive towards us. Anyhow, these are more of these enemies. Hello. We've got small ones, and now we have big ones. That one's called Flamey the Shredder. Flamey the Shredder. This one's called Coff Coffin Chain the Rotten. 
this guy sound like Forsaken. Now you'll notice the normal enemy health bar is red. Oh god, we've got ice physics as well. Forgot all about that. Uh, this guy has an orange health bar. Now, here you are learning that um, orange health bar, when it's depleted, leads to a red health bar. And this guy turns into a ghost, which I kind of love. I kind of love this. I think these guys are actually called ogres, technically, which I never, never would have called them that, quite frankly, but hey, good to know. I suppose they do kind of have, like, horns on their weird skeleton face as ghosts. <laughs> they're bloody annoying to kill, I'll tell you that for a fact. They're awful. You have to jump up to hit them properly because, well, they're floating. They haven't got any legs. It's a bit awful, really. Anyhow. Ooh, ooh. Let's clear out this little forty area and, uh... Oh, we have enough gems for... Uh, enough, um... Yeah, no, enough, uh... Gems, I guess. Yeah, no gems. Uh, for a fury. However, we are still really need to do on right now. I'm gonna be honest. Um... Like most resources in video games, I am very, very... Ooh, big explosion. Look, cool people don't look at explosions. You knew this already. <laughs> oh, dear me. Um, but yeah, like most things in, in video games, if I'm told, alright, you can use this semi-sparingly, you know, you, you don't have access to it all the time, um, I will never use it unless absolutely necessary. But I will try and remember to use the Fury, because quite frankly, it looks cool as fuck. The big old floaty time slowdown explosion stuff. It's great, of course it's great. Who wouldn't love that? Alright, smash some gemmy worms. Even though we're at full health, smashing those gem clusters. Ooh, I'll actually pop to this screen and show you. If we head to the pause menu, we have a level up section. So getting those gem clusters, you see this pool of purple stuff in the sort of... I'll get my mouse on the screen. Hello. This pool of purple stuff down here, this is our level up juice. So whenever we're collecting these light blue gems that you may see occasionally... Uh, that's what this is. This is our meter that is that. And if we select the element, so you can see the, the far here, there's the the breath powers on the out, outer ring and then the triangle powers on the inner ring. Um, and you can upgrade them. If you hold down X, you can spend some stuff to upgrade it and make it more powerful, which is pretty damn neat. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm going to upgrade our fire breath as much as possible because we use it the most and throughout the game I'll, I will use it the most. When we learn Earth, that is what I will use the most when we learn it. However, it's, it's not it's not until quite late in the game when we when we learn Earth, very sadly. So we've upgraded our Fire Breath by one and our Fire Triangle by another one. Uh, we can't quite get to the number two, I don't think. Yeah, one and two thirds. We're getting hot. We're, we're nearly towards the end of that. Um, and there's a description on the side that tells you what it does, but quite frankly, makes it bigger and more powerful. So now our Fire Breath is a bit bigger and our Fire Triangle... Has a bit more kick to it, apparently. Not too much more, but a little bit. Uh, it's a cool idea. It's nice, isn't it? It's a little bit of extra gameplay stuff. I do enjoy it. I very much enjoy it. Um, also, I what well, another thing I enjoy. I enjoy a lot of other things about this game. Um, is um, the different breaths you unlock. They all have different abilities, right? They're not just you. Oh, the ice one is ice coloured. It's not just a blue fire breath and then a blue fire bomb. They all have their their, their, their gameplay in different ways. And that's the reason the Earth Breath is my favourite because the, uh, the sort of the main breath attack for Earth Breath is just a big, powerful, just frontal cone blast. It's just like a, pew, you know, just like a. Pew. That's the only way I can describe it. And then the triangle one, you throw a bomb that summons a tornado, which is honestly cool as fuck. Anyhow, speaking of um, different breaths, let's learn all about that. Uh oh. All right, we got zapped by a tower of electricity. Fire, are you okay, buddy? And now we can go zap zap. I wish those enemies died that quickly. <laughs> and now we have electricity breath. That's how you learn the breaths through most of the game. No, all of the game, actually. Um, you come into a, um, a situation that is a bit unfavorable. Um, and you just, I don't know, learn it, question mark. I think Ignite has said earlier something about when you're in uh, troubling times, the ancestors will speak to you through your blood or some other expositional shit. Um, and as a result, you will learn cool things. However, I've got to use the fire breath to kill these enemies because we've just upgraded it and it's a bit more powerful and I like it. <laughs> Anyhow, we have to... Um, that big tower up there that has the lightning thing on it. We need to break that with this uh, cannon before we can actually um, well, progress. However, these enemies are endless until we do so, which is kind of annoying. I kind of hate that. Um, however, 
shouldn't be too hard to just whack a couple more snowballs at it. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what's in these snowballs, but they're pretty dangerous apparently. They're they can take down entire towers. I don't quite understand how, but uh, nevertheless, they do in fact do that. But, now bugger off you! I want to, I want to have fun with snowballs. Leave me alone. Oh dear! Move, move, move. Thank you. One more. Should be it. Hopefully. Yay! And there we go. One electric tower zaps down. Bop. Uh, tell you what, we'll show off the electric breath a little bit. I'll select it there. So you can see in the top left, we've got the electric breath selected. Um, you can sort of drag people around with it a bit. But when you when you upgrade it, it becomes a lot more powerful. The pull of it is a lot better. But you can sort of drag people in different directions. It's the first sort of uh, way of moving that you really have. And quite frankly, I'm not too good at using it. And by the time you try to drag them off the edge, it's just a lot easier to use the fire breath to just burn them down. It just does more damage. It's just quicker. Oh, dear. But it's useful in uh, niche situations. And it makes a cool noise. I'm going to be honest, it makes a cool noise. You love it. You love it. Alrighty. Let's continue. Whee. So we don't have our... Um, we only have the lightning breath so far. We don't have our triangle ability, our ranged ability. We learned that when we rescued the uh, electric guardian, Voltaire, who is who we're here for, coincidentally. Um and complete his training in the, in, back in the temple. But the training sections from now on are a lot smaller and a lot quicker. They're just breath-based because, um, well, we already know how to fight. We've done the combat basics. We just need to learn the breath stuff. Uh, finishing off with a fury. Now, speaking of combat, welcome to a heavy combat section. I definitely died here quite a few times, so I will try and remember to use my fury at some point when the enemies get very tough. And there's, there's separate waves of enemies, and I think some of them are worse than the others. We have one big guy so far. Not too bad. We can deal with one big guy. Scrow the Rotten. Hello, Scrow the Rotten. Get rid of your armor, please, and turn into a ghost. Thank you very much. Pop. Hello. They're very strange when they're on fire, these ghosts. They've got a lot of... They've got a lot of red going on, which I suppose makes sense for being on fire, but it, they look really strange. I kind of like it. Bop. I scroll the rotten and hello Ooh, explosions because we just needed more visual glitter on the screen more noises and now we have two big ones and four smaller ones let's get rid of the smaller ones first I don't want to use my fury just yet I think there's one more um one more set of enemies that's a little bit harder I, I just want to hold out I want to use it I want to I want to make maximum use of it oh wait it's almost effective alrighty hello big old you lots who have we got uh, Scarefang the Disinterred, wonderful, and Riccardi the Returned, wonderful, wonderful names. I love the alliteration going on with uh, old Riccardi here. <laughs> oh, dear me. I always thought it was very strange that they were like, yeah, we're going to just have random name generations in for the enemies. Just adds a bit of flavour. It's the smallest little thing, but it's very cute. We are out of magic juice. There we go. Good old gem cluster to bring us back to life there. What on earth did you just shoot green fire at me? never seen you use that ability before, probably because I'm always too up to close and personal with them. Never really fight them from range. There we go. Get some more gems that have um, appeared from a cluster. Good stuff. Hello. Hello. Yeah, these guys, when they turn into ghosts, get a little bit vicious. They um, Their axes have plenty of range um, and do plenty of damage. And they're also plenty hard to hit. Uh-oh, more explosions. Who have we got next? Uh -oh. I think it might be ape time. Oh yeah, it's ape time. Open the gates, let me through. Please? There we go. Ooh, big ape. Hello, 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 hello. You got some friends with you. Bring them on, I've got a fury. Hee <laughs> hee. Alrighty, it's fury time. Of course you fury me there. You've got a fury me there. It's the cool thing to do. Yeah, big explosion. Lubby cavern ember. So as you can see, it insta-killed um, the smaller enemies. Whereas this guy, it brought to about half health, less, uh, uh, not quite as much as that. Um, but he's usually finished off when we don't have to worry about the smaller ones running around the place. So a fury isn't quite insta kill everything on the screen; it's insta kill the small things on the screen and weaken the big things. Anyhow, let's carry on. That was a nice little section. Got that over and done with. Pretty simple. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's running away. Oh, good for it. 
I would run away too if I, well, no. To be honest, if I saw this adorable dragon running towards me, I would run towards him and give him a hug. I wouldn't run away. Probably. I'd like to think so, anyhow. Hello. What are you doing? Still running? Okay, good for you. Anyhow. More explosions. Haven't had enough of these already. <laughs> ah, good stuff. Boom, boom. It's nice to be getting into the meat of this game. Now, we haven't had too many cutscenes. We haven't, haven't had too many... You know, slow exposition -y bits and bobs. You know, we've done with that. We've learned the story, we've learned the gameplay, we've learned how to act, how to be, the motivations for everyone, and now we're just thrown into it. God, no. We're just thrown into it. We've got loads of fighting to do, loads of apes to kill, gems to collect. Just have a good time. So we shall. Or I shall. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if a lot of people will, but I will. I do wonder if I didn't, if it wasn't for the heavy nostalgia I have for these games, I wonder how much I would genuinely enjoy them. Because I will say, it's a lot of, I have a lot of nostalgia for these games. Aside from uh, the third Spyro game on PS1, this is the Spyro of my childhood. This is my childhood Spyro game. So, this first one I have a lot, it's, it's a lot of nostalgia. It's a very powerful creature, is this game for me? It, it, it does a lot. <laughs> Uh, but I do, I do have to say, I think it does hold up a little bit. I think it does. It's not quite a, you'll enjoy this if you had it as a kid, but otherwise you'll hate it. I think it does genuinely, it does sort of, it holds up better than I thought it would, which makes me so happy. It really does. Not necessarily in the uh, dialogue department, but uh, yeah, we can, uh, we can just sort of uh, breeze past that, hopefully. Pop. Goodbye, a roll dive lizard. Dive lizard? It's a certain amount of half. Hello. Bomp. Bomp. Oh, yeah. It's nice when it's quiet and there's not too many apes running around the place. So it's wonderful. However, not often that happens. Oh, yes, no. I think we can assume what's going to happen here. Dun 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 dun. dun. Ooh. And run because everything's falling on you. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> Worst part is they turn the camera around for this bit, so it's a bit where well, you can't see what's happening. Anyhow, we made it just. Sound effects of this game are so classic PlayStation. They are, are they? It's a lovely PS2 game. It makes me so happy. <laughs> dun 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 dun. Some of my favourite enemies in this place are coming up next. Boom. Not in this bit, but you see that gate over to the left? Over there, over there. That's where we're going next. That's where I, there's some, there's some cool enemies. Uh, which I'm actually hoping to maybe have a Fury saved up for, but then again, maybe not. That's sort of it. They're big beasties, and as we've learned, Furies aren't the most effective against big beasties. It's when you've got loads of little small ones to deal with. They're, uh, they're really powerful. Oh yeah, I love how our, our flame breath feels more powerful. I know we just upgraded it, but it really does, you can feel the power in it. It's got more spread, it does more. I enjoy it very much hit more enemies at once. It's not just a little frontal cone. It's a big frontal cone. You love to see it. Show the favourites. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm just going to murder some eggs first, apparently. It's a very uh, murder heavy game, this one, you know? <laughs> Although, to be fair, in the original Spyro games, you did a lot of murdering of innocent creatures just to either make Sparks healthy or progress the game, so... <laughs> That's not too much of a departure. It's just, well, the tone was a little bit less serious in the first one, so it, it didn't feel quite so weighty. It wasn't, you know, oh god, I'm murdering an innocent creature to feed my dragonfly. It was, no, no, we're just, we're bopping around having a nice little platformy time. Alrighty. I'm trying to use my triangle shots to disrupt them all. Because that's what those are most useful for. I'm gonna just sort of shoot them into a pack and, yeah, knock them all up. Get them all stunned. Um, however, they're sort of, oh, they're a bit too short. Let's sort of go over them. It's not very effective. You have to either be right in their face or you have to aim it properly. Well, I'm not very good at aiming. There's another cavern ember there. Must be a relative of the other one we killed. Anyhow, let's grab some more jammies. Ah, yeah, we've, we've nearly got a fury. It wouldn't be a bad idea to keep that in mind for the next section. I don't think there's any gems in this little area. Nah, there's not. Alrighty. Let's go fight the big boys. Ah, oh, I remember dying to these guys a lot as a kid. I love them, though. I love them. Oh, sorry. We ran out of charge. I thought the game had stopped. There we go. Oh, we're being locked in. It's an arena. Who have we got? Who have we got? Big skeletal ghost horsies. These guys are absolutely massive and also have wonderful names. We have Freeze Shiver the Freezer. 
gorgeous. Um, these things are fucking terrible. They're awful. I love them. They're great. It's giant, floaty, skeletal ghost horsey with rider. It's amazing. They're awful. They do so much damage. They thankfully only have one health bar, but bloody hell, they're deadly. Believe me, deck, if, you, if you don't get careful, they can really overwhelm you. Thankfully, we just have one at once. And now, we have a few more. Two small ones and two big ones at once. Oh, look at them trotting along. Da -da 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 I love them. I love them. Thankfully, however, we have a fury. So let's use and abuse that. Hi, kids. Fury time. <laughs> Pop. All right, all the small ones are dealt with, thankfully. And these guys are down to about half health each. Oh, not even that. Yeah, it's two thirds again. Um, when you fully upgrade your your breaths, so if we fully upgrade our fire breath and fully upgrade the triangle for our fire, um, it will also upgrade your fury to be even more powerful and do even more random bullshit screen noise things, which is very fun. It's very wonderful. Cool. Hell yeah, I like them. Oh, they're, they're, they're skeleton horses. It's very fun. I enjoy it very much. Are they horses? I don't know what you'd call them technically. Anyhow. More big boys, and also a lightning zappy tower in the distance there. Three of these ones. Gosh, hello. Maybe more challenging than the uh, horses, because you've got, got big old health battles you have. And quite frankly, you're, when there's three of you, you're a bit annoying to deal with. You're very good at stunning. You are. And, uh, oh, I don't have a... Uh, here's a section where we are going to run out of, um, if we're not careful, going to run out of magic juice and have to rely on our melee attacks for a bit. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Let's try and get one of these dead before that happens. Although, I don't have my hopes up. Oh no, we're kind of low. We're kind of low. Shit, we're about. Oh no. Oh no. I rely on that a lot. I rely on my breaths a lot. When we're out of them, it's a bit, it's a bit rubbish it is. Although, fire breath um, it does have an exemption because you do need to use it for a few puzzles. So you can never truly be out of fire. I'll, um, I'll show you in a second once we finish this combat. Because we've accidentally picked up a few gems, and now we're not out of we're not out of fire anymore. Okay, we're out of it now. Um, when we're out, fully drained of our magic juice, we can still do a little, a little, a little floof, a little, little puff that will activate certain puzzles if we need it. Um, and it'll also gently set enemies on fire. Not very much. It'll more than anything just give them a burning animation. But you know, it's it's nice. It's a nice touch. None of the other breaths work like that. Just fire. Because it is required for puzzles. I believe that's the logic behind it, anyhow. It's nice to always have a little bit of a backup as well. I'm a, I'm a fan of it. VR animation is cool. It's great, isn't it? I really enjoy it. It's, 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 it's a wonderful, big, powerful moment. And of course, when you upgrade it, it becomes even more powerful and even more bigger and stronger. Just terrifying. It's amazing. I love it. Hell yeah. Good stuff. Ooh. There's a monkey shooting lasers, question mark, to that tower. Anyhow, destroying the electric towers so we can pass through. I don't know quite why they did that, but I'm glad they did. don't know why they want to help us advance through. I'm not going to complain, though. Jump over the fence posts. The spiky, spiky fence posts. And get ourselves some well-earned gems, quite frankly. Oh, yeah. Fierce Spiro's light floofs. Yeah, the light floofs are going to get you. They're going to get you. His little, his little floofs of um, flame. Flame floofs, if you will. I don't remember what this next section is. Oh, now I do. <laughs> Got another fighting section. I say that, the entire game is fighting sections. It feels reductive to be like, oh, another fighting section. It's a fighting game. It's 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 got a combat system. It's not, you know, it's what you'd expect. All right, we can't leave this ring. Igniter's trained us for this. Let's jump and use our thing. <laughs> Thank you, Igniter's, for your training. Very wise. And we're giving some lovely, a lovely gem cluster or two in the middle to keep us going. And uh, kill things until they all die, basically. The usual stuff. Oh. Guvna Silent Drum. Goodbye, Guvna Silent Drum. All right, where's the big one? There we are. Hello. Uh, this one will actually run into the middle. We don't have to totally defeat them from range. What were they called? What were they called? The scary Wolf, was it? Voti Scar Wolf. I thought it was Scary Wolf. I was like, that's a strange name. Scary Wolf. No, no. Scar Wolf. Much more sensible. Very edgy. I love it. Alright, be gone, Scar Wolf. And take your magic with you. Ta da! Alrighty. Carrying on. <gasps> I remember this bit. Look at the. My favourite thing in this game. With the cauldrons that you can spackle their heads. I don't know why that's my favourite thing, but I enjoy it very much. This is a little kitchen area, isn't it? Yeah, you got little, little little chairs. Well, they're getting blown up a bit, but there's little chairs. It's very cute. Little chairs and tables, little picnic benches. 
this is where everyone sits down and has their meals in the well in the you know ancient ruins of a um of a frozen ice fortress you know it's just where you, it's where you have your meals it's very cute i like it very much it's a pain for defeating these guys here don't need big sp open spaces though do you mind there we go Hello. Some gems up here. Must have killed someone up here without realizing. Oh, maybe it was the big explosions that did that, to be fair. <laughs> Fun fact, these big explosions where enemies spawn, uh, they're being dropped in by these crates, carried by winged beasties, who we will be fighting at some point. And they, once we discover them, similar to the apes, will be um, found throughout the uh, the rest of the game. But in different colours. Oh, bloody hell. Do you mind? Just killed a few of you. I'll have to deal with more of you. They don't know when to leave, they do, these guys. They really don't. No manners. Not a single one between them all. Phoenix mighty flame. My flame is mightier than yours. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Let's grab a gem up here. Oh, I thought there was one up there. There wasn't. Alrighty. Where to next? Ooh, we have got a fury. Got to keep in mind. I think we're, um... Well, not at the end, but we're definitely... We're, we're, ooh. For some reason have an alternate gem texture. There's just some gems that are in a barrel. It's quite cute. I always enjoyed that. Oh, hello, hello, hello. More apes. Of course. Of course. <laughs> hello, Jace Rift Shot. Goodbye, Jace Rift Shot. Hello. What were you? Old blood snake cutter. You're dead now. I can't say on the name. Wonderful apes. Ooh. Good stuff. Goodness, we've been live for an hour and five, five minutes. Blimey. I bet the majority of that was spent in the swamp. I love the swamp. I think it's so cute and relaxing. And like I was saying earlier, the theme music is absolutely gorgeous. It's very happy. It's very soft. It's very gentle. It's very childhood. Um, I will say that the first bit does take a heck of a long time. It's it's a definitely a chunk to progress through. It's not the biggest area in terms of, you know, like actual level to explore, but with all the cutscenes and the exposition and the talking, which is necessary. Like, you do want to introduce your game properly. And especially, you know, the combat stuff, the, the training, the technical, you want, you want to teach the people how to do it properly. I can understand it. But replaying it, it definitely is one of the slower sections. It definitely takes a bit of time to progress through. Alrighty, where are we off to now? More apes behind wooden barriers? Don't they know I have wings? Apparently I've given up on flying, but I have wings. I can still jump at the very least. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Give me some gems. Give me a... You're laughing at me. Absolute piece of shit. How dare you. Moon Raven. That's a, that's a very cool surname. Some of these apes, quite frankly, have very cool surnames for what they are. Pop. Oh. Oh, more explosions. Hello. Boop. Honestly, though, as a child, all of these levels were absolutely massive and they never ended. However, as an adult, they take about an hour to get through. It's not, it's not, it's not, not as big as I remember. But you know what? I bloody love them. Oh, those are explosives. There's no enemies here, but I want to set them off regardless. Because, come on, if you present it with explosives, you want to make them go boom. You're a dragon that can breathe fire, and you've been given explosives. What do you expect to happen? <laughs> Hello. How are we all doing? You all ran straight past me. How bloody dare you? You're not like you're here to fight me. Oh, bop, bop, bop. Wonderful stuff. Um, I believe for the second game in the series, The Eternal Light, it's sort of viewed... I mean, not many people... Quite a few people are not big fans of uh, this series, full stop. But um, quite a few people... Uh, the Eternal Night, the middle game, is sort of... I would say it's the darkest and the moodiest game in the series. And it also is the most difficult and also the least... I don't know, it definitely changes up, but it feels very much just like this game, but a bit more. It's not particularly too different or too revolutionary. You can tell it's made exactly the same sort of thing. It's not, you know. Um, which I like, to be honest. I like this game. I want to just not remember. That's, that's something I'm on board with. Um, however, the difficulty spike is relentless. It's a very much more difficult game. Um, but I think the low budget of the series is especially prevalent in the second game. Because there's... It's basically there's every... you know. There is a lot of 
reused assets from the first game, which is a totally okay thing to do. I'm not gonna tell game designers, no, everything has to be brand new for every new game, how dare you? Um, but it's it's quite heavy, and especially enemy reusage and stuff like that. Um, there is, um, why am I trying to set fire to them? I thought they were dying about it for some reason. Uh, you can sort of you can see the low budget in the game, which is sad. I hate when games are like, all right, you've you got low budget and not much time, make a good game. Like, what do you expect the developers to do? It's, it's not really through fault of their own. It's through fault of capitalism. You know, it's it's not it's not it's a bit sad, really, because there's there's so much potential there. You know. But... Anyhow, I'm ranting about nonsense. Let me have a drink. There we go. I remember this bit. Actually, there's something to note. You know Spyro's voice, Elijah Wood, we've got to be used to it by now. When he grabs onto a ledge and pulls himself up, the sort of the pant pant and then the, well not just the pant pant noise, sounds very distinctly not Elijah Wood to me. I could be entirely wrong, but let's try and... Like the little huh at the end, that's Elijah Wood, you can hear that, but the sort of the pant pant bit just doesn't sound like him at all. It sounds like almost a more feminine voice, it's very interesting. Anyhow, this fall, this floor falls. <laughs> because you weren't having enough trouble in this area already. There we go. Wonderful stuff. Alrighty. We are getting towards the end now. Oh no, this is like the fast, the last sort of main section. These are the Dreadwings. You know when I was on about the flying beasties dropping crates earlier? That's these guys. The Dreadwings. These don't have random generated names. They are just called Dreadwings. However, let's uh, fight their eight friends first. Or either get exploded first, and then we'll fight the rape friends. <laughs> Alrighty. We've got a camp at the end here, this big open expanse between us and them. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Dreadwing. I uh, haven't played any of these. Played Spyro 1, 2, and 3, and the GBA ones. Ah, oh, the um, Season of Ice and Season of Fire. Hello, Dreadwing. Dun, dun, dun. Now, the Dreadwings, they have a lot of health. They scream a lot, and quite frankly, I struggled a lot with them as a kid. They were blue and awful. I couldn't manage them too well. Um, yes, to you too. They scream a lot too. Uh, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that this guy is stood next to the edge for some reason and just knock him off. Goodbye. Whee! <laughs> and away goes his elf. The good news is we still get the gems. They come back to us. They just sort of we absorb them back in through space. It's great. It's wonderful. Alrighty, so this is, yeah, this is like the last main outside section of Dante's Freezer, so if you're going to miss this area, absorb as much of it as you can right now. <laughs> Actually, this is timed out very well. I didn't expect it to. We've got about 10 minutes left to stream, and I would say that's about appropriate for the amount of, um, amount of time we've got left in this area. I didn't expect that to work out so well. How very smooth. How very wonderful. What's this ape doing? Alrighty, now we have um, heavy dreadwing section. We basically have to fight about ten of these things in a row. They only come in pairs, but once one of them dies, another takes its place, basically, for quite a while. Alrighty, we do have a Fury, but I'm almost tempted to... I don't want to save it, but these are the Dreadwings. It's not going to be too effective against them. And it's just two big enemies at once. You're not particularly like, oh, yes, the Fury, that's what'll save us there. You've got the Spiro, Spiro, got this, absolutely. And here's the thing, these Dreadwings have wings. You can still knock them off the edge and they will still die from that. They will absolutely... <laughs> this game is very wonderful at acknowledging that Spyro can fly, or creatures can fly, and then deciding that they can't fly. <laughs> Which I love. I quite frankly adore. Let's just grab these gems real quick. Alrighty, more Dreadwings. Bring them at me. Bring them at me. Ah, are we getting some more small ones dropped off? If we get more small ones dropped off, I'll do a Fury. I think I'll be happy with that. Oh, yes, we got some small ones. Do you mind, Dreadwing? There we go. All right, let's just, uh... This Dreadwing's dead. Let's drag all these small ones over to the other Dreadwing. And we'll introduce them to my best friend, the Fire Fury. Come along, children. Oh, we get the other Dreadwing as well. Hang on, let's round them all up. Come along, you. Scream your way over here. Walkies. Oh, you're all in the area. Let's do a Fury. Wop, 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 wop. And... Kaboom. Hell yeah, you'll love to see it. And fun fact, Spyro's a little bit on fire afterwards. Just just runs around on fire. I believe we'll set nearby enemies on fire a little bit, or his melee attacks will a bit more. Anyhow, it's cute. It's a, it's, it's a cute little detail. It makes me very happy. Well, that made a little bit... Um... Ow! Just that crate of apes dropped on our face. Very dangerous. I don't think the Dark Master understands how dangerous his armies are. 
Oh, wait, that's kind of the point, never mind. <laughs> Alrighty. Got Tila Pearl Tracker. Oh, another Dread Wings appeared out of nowhere. Of course it has. Oh, daily. Yeah, this section especially took me a heck of a long time as a child. A heck of a long time. These Dread Wings, are, they don't play around. They can block some of your attacks. They can sort of deflect and knock you back. Oh, goodness me. You've got to really rely on your... Um, or I really rely on my Fire Breath to help me out with it. Especially the, the triangle, the firebomb explosion thing where the entire screen goes red and you can't see a thing. I rely on that fairly heavily during this, during these sort of fights. For it stuns enemies and disrupts them and ow! I always love that sound effect. They're very screamy, the Dreadwings, but that sort of, they do a ranged scream attack at you. I'll try and get the other one to do it when it's a bit, a bit more on its own, a bit quieter. Um, I always really liked that sound effect. I thought it was wonderful. Wonderful to hear. If not a bit ear piercing. Great death scream as well. <laughs> I'd love to know where they got the voices from, the sound effects from. I'd love to know if someone voiced them or what it was. Let's deal with these two uh, small ones quick and see if we can entice this Dreadwing to a, a screaming match. Would you care to shout at us, Dreadwing? No, 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 not run up to us, shout at us. Come on now, from a distance. You gonna? You gonna shout? Come on, ding your screams, I believe in you. Come on, Dreadwing. Oh, are ready for it? Nope, nope, it gave up. How fucking dare you? How dare you? Alright, this thing's not gonna do what I want. It's never gonna do what I want. I should have known this from the very beginning. This is okay. You gonna scream, Dreadwing? There we go. I really, really find that a cool sound effect. I don't know why. It's just very weird and screamy. It makes me happy. Anyhow, it's murdered. It's perfect. <laughs> They are horrible screamy bastards, to be fair, but, um, very cool. Enjoy them very much. Just wish there wasn't quite so many of them, quite frankly. We've been killing them far too long at this point. And, meow, to you two. I don't know if we've got left. This might be the last one, but I could be entirely incorrect. Might just be getting my hopes up at this point. Nope, another one spawned. How fucking dare it. God, these things are endless. Endless, I tell you. For the longest time as a kid, I was like, is this a section where I have to try and do something? Otherwise, the enemies will just keep respawning. Because it feels like that. It's just an endless, endless barrage of enemies. Just dreadwing after dreadwing. There doesn't seem to be an end to it. And there is an end to it eventually. You just have to kill them all. But it doesn't... Sort of halfway through, you start worrying, going, am I supposed to be doing a puzzle? Are these endless enemies until I do a puzzle? Like, what's the, what's the deal here? That is not the case. Hello, dreadwing. Oh, I'm attacking nothing. Just be there. A fire tornado there. Sort of thing. Bop. Good stuff. Yeah, I can happily say that we will finish Dante's Freezer this stream. We will we will finish this area off. Which is a shame because it's one of my favourite areas, but at the same time, it's a snowy ice fortress. Once you've seen the first bit, you've kind of seen it all. It's not much not much of a variation. <gasps> this is it. We're progressing. First cutscene in ages as well. Maybe we should head this way, Jadius. Yeah, let's avoid the door and go into the creepy tiny cave. Oh, check this out. Echo! Blimey, it stresses me out how small that thing is. And a loading screen. Haven't seen one of these in a while, but not since we arrived in the place. I do enjoy how most of the level is just... <laughs> is one long sort of play thing. There's not much of a... Not many breaks in between it. Hello. Who's the genius now? Do you lot too? Bop. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's fight some apes. Just a few. And then we're on to the big bad boss. Spoilers, but we're going to fight the boss in a second. You know, the one where I was like, oh, I struggled with it as a child until someone told me just walk up to it and hit it. Yeah, that. <laughs> I will actually, before we go to the boss, let me break these next few gems. I'll see if we can upgrade our breath a little bit more. Because um, it would be nice to have. Hello. Oh, the lone survivor. Ephesa dive lizard. More like dead lizard. Anyhow. I do enjoy these cave interiors. The floor is weirdly... I don't I don't know if it's supposed to be mist, mist rolling through it or like weird goop that we're standing on. I really enjoy it. It makes me really happy the way it's moving. It's a very strange look, and I quite enjoy it. I do. Why do I do? I right, smash these last few crystals, and then we'll uh, get ourselves a little grade screen going. Wonderful. 
on level up, please. Uh, yeah, let's take out ranged one a bit further, and then we can hopefully do our um, there we go, our fire breath um, to the second level. Cross our fingers that we get that far. Ah, we should do. Yeah. Yes, I've got loads of juice. Look at it, not even draining. Hell yeah. This is called Drag Soothes Fire Blast of the Eternal Inferno. Good to know. I don't think we'll. Oh, we got, no, we're not going to get to the max. No, not quite. Oh, so close. Look at it. Just going to not make it. Just going to not. Fuck you. So close. Yet so very far. Alrighty. Well, we have a bigger flame breath now. Oh, yes, we do. Look at that. And, uh... No, we didn't upgrade explosion, did we? Oh, did we? Oh, we did a bit, I think. Oh, <gasps> boss time. Hey, that's him. We did it. Bye. Hmm. I don't like this. Yeah, it's too quiet. Too easy. What, e what part was easy? Y getting chased by frozen madmen and gorillas? Uh, sparks. That was the best scream I've ever heard. Welcome everyone to the first boss. This is the Ice King. It's one of those big armor suit guys, but you know, bigger. It's the big one. Oh, hello, the Ice King. This guy has a yellow health bar. Dun, dun, dun. So we've got yellow, orange, and then red to get through. Good stuff. Let's walk up to it and hit it. That should do the work. Look, it's laughing at us. We can melt a shield with our fire breath. Amazing. We also have a fury, so let's... Uh, do you know Let's just use it now. Let's get it out of the way. Why not? Uh, can a controller use? Or are you playing from actual PlayStation? Uh, I am using an emulator. A uh, PS2 emulator, but in my opinion, it's... Hey, it's very fucking old. Um... But you need to actually get the BIOS from your PlayStation. Ooh, phase one done. This guy's not, I'm gonna be honest, slack pushover. He's not the hardest boss in the game. Once you'd realize you can just walk up to him and hit him. However, we are running out of juice at this point. So let's uh, take a second and have a walk back. He shields himself at some point, summons some crystals, and these crystals give us gems. Hell yeah. Super cool. Super cool. Yes. Look at them gems. Delicious, delicious gems. Ooh. Also does that at some point. Wonderful stuff. All right, back to bashing. Uh, but yeah, sorry, it's it's a, a PS2 emulator, but it requires you to get the actual BIOS from your PS2. So I'm essentially using the, the files from my original PS2 to run it. So it's I do actually have to have a PS2 to run it. It's not it doesn't feel quite so you know horrendous. Um, but the first time I did stream this game, I did run it off my actual PS2. Um, the only problem with that is, well, let me show you what button is it. Let me try and remember. Um, sorry, Ice King. I know you're doing dramatic things, going from face to face. Which button is it? This one? Oh yes, this one. This is the original resolution of the game. It is in original PS2 resolution. It looks exactly as you expected to. Poor old Ice King. He's hobbling around a bit now. So he's been through some shit. Yes. Let's take a step back and oh yes, crystal time. We'll avoid these and hopefully get some more gems. Gimme, give gimme. Give I need these gems for survival. Thank you very much. Ooh, doing this again. Um, but yes, that's the original resolution. However, the emulator lets me run it at 1080p. Wonderful stuff. Oh, shit. Um, so, the emulator does provide a lot better quality, quite frankly. Oh, we've been frozen in ice. Shit, we've been frozen in ice. I don't know how to get free from that. Just have to get hit, I suppose. Anyhow, let's finish the Ice King. Ice King, more like the nice king. Wait, he's not even nice. He's <laughs> quite a piece of shit, quite frankly. Spyro got flattened. How rude. And Spyro defeat the Ice King. Who sadly does not drop a giant amount of gems, which always broke my heart. Bump. It borders on the miraculous, incredible, stupendous. A dragon your size defeating that th th thing. Thank you. Uh, 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 Spyro. A purple dragon named Spyro. Amazing. Of course, there were unsubstantiated rumors of a purple dragon countless generations ago, but most considered a hearsay. This is Vault here. Legend. It's hard to believe, difficult to fathom, amazing to comprehend. Uh, hmm? Why do they gag this guy? He witters on so a little bit. He's very passed. wordy. So many things have been learned, and now here he is standing right before me. Excuse me, Enthusiastic, Mr. Enthusiastic, if you will. Uh, what, what is it? 
So should, shouldn't we get going? Oh, of course. But where to? Well, back to the temple. A friend of yours is waiting? Ignitus? Yes, Ignitus. Of course, much to tell. Many hypotheses to pose. I believe... <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> and that's Dante's Frieza done. Done. Ticked off the list. Uh, from this point onwards, you go back to the temple. You have a little chit-chat with Ignitus, which we'll, we'll watch through. Uh, and then you do electric training with Voltaire, who is the... Cause he's, well, he's the electricity guardian. And you've just learned you can breathe electricity. So he's going to teach us how yes, to do that. Yes, Voltaire, it's good to see you as well. But we don't have time to waste on sentiment. Back to Cinder. She was doing what to you? Cinder's a chick. Oh, it's hard to be absolutely sure, Ignitus. But it seems she was using me as some sort of suspended organic power source. Huh? She was using him as a battery. Why didn't he just say so? Not only that, she also left with a glowing yellow orb. And I believe that I somehow powered it. Does this mean anything to you, Ignitus? Perhaps. Perhaps. What I do know is that we need to rescue the other guardians before Cinder can power any more of those orbs. I agree, Ignitus. But first, I'd like to impart some useful knowledge to Spyro. These are be his recently acquired electricity-based exhalation device. What? Well, he says he'd like to teach me some things about that electricity battery. Oi, why didn't you just say so? Hell yeah. We're gonna stop here, but we're gonna take a bit of a stand in the pool first, because of course you wanna stand in the pool. Look at it. Makes fun noises. But yes, Voltaire's gonna teach us all about the, the zap zap. Gonna teach us how to zap things bigger and harder and stronger, and teach us the rage zappy thing and the zappy fury. However, We've been playing this game for two hours and five minutes now, so I'm going to end the stream here. This was a lovely little time. Did I actually say what controller I was using? Sorry, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller. I didn't even answer your question. <laughs> so sorry. Um, because it's the only controller I have. The, like, you know, the USB controller. It's the main one I use for any sort of controller-based game. Um, but yeah. Thanks for stopping by. This is a lovely little stream. I always adore getting to play these games because... Oh, Xbox 360 for a PlayStation 2 game. Yeah, but I can't really plug a PlayStation controller into it, because it's not really the... Well, it doesn't have a USB port. It's not... It's a weird, chunky old thing, and I don't... I don't know. It's nice and comfy. There's nothing wrong with it. You've calling the police. How dare. <laughs> oh, good stuff. But yeah, it's, um... It's a lovely game. I adore playing it. Suit Earthboy. Earth one's the best. Terrador. He's gorgeous, isn't he? They're all amazing. I believe Terrador's the last one we rescue. It's, um... We meet Ignatius. We fire stuff. We do Voltaire with some electricity stuff. Uh, then we learn Ice Breath and we meet Cyril. Of course, he's called Cyril. Um, who's besties with Voltaire. They get along very well. And then we meet Terrador, who's sort of stoic and was the Earth one. He's super cool. I love his design. Uh, and he's sort of stoic. And I, I would pair them up as Terrador and Ignatius. They're sort of the stoic responsible ones, and then Voltaire and Cyril are sort of the, the chatty, excitable ones, bless them. But yeah, oh, they're all cool. I love the wall. I love the dragon designs in this one. Wait, is Spyro wiggling his bum? <laughs> Spyro, you dancing? What? <laughs> Spyro, you dancing? Did, did, just have a little dance. What the f I've never seen him do that before. That's amazing. <laughs> what a cute purple dragon. But yes, this is a gorgeous game. I really do, I adore the dragon designs. The big dragons are very cool. Look at them with the little wings and the little details and oh, like now you're server in the kill and being a cool boy. But yeah, it's a very lovely game. I'd love to maybe play more of it on stream at some point, but um, not any time too soon. Thank you for watching everyone. Let's just pop to the schedule quick. <gasps> We've done it, completed the week. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Wasn't even too bad of a week. Well, could have been better, but could have been worse. But yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. The celebration, as I'm calling it, will continue into next week. The the one year of me streaming nonsense that we've got going on. Um, plans include more games that we played this year. The sort of the celebration celebration uh, started this Friday, sort of the end of this week. So it's yesterday and today, basically. And the games we played yesterday and today were all games I played in the first. Well, in 2020, when I first started streaming in that year, the games we're playing next week are all going to be games we've played quite a bit this year. So it's going to be things like Animal Crossing. It's going to be things like Planet Coaster. You know, the more recent games that we've all played together. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be nice. It'd be nice to revisit the classics. I'm excited for that. 
Um, but otherwise, thanks for stopping by, everyone. I adore getting to show this game off. Even if it's not a very good game, I enjoy showing it off very much. Lovely to have you all here. I'm going to bugger off and go to Well, actually, I'm going to get some pasta and then go to bed. But yes, thank you for stopping by. Uh, take care. But yeah, I'll hopefully see you next week. Enjoy your weekend. You deserve it. All right. Bye.